It's been a week, but it feels so much longer. I'm willing to bet that nobody's trying to see my face right now. You came here for one thing and one thing alone, and I'm gonna give it to you. Introducing the 2024 School Nest Lesson Planner Launch. Stick around, I have all the details. Yes. Foggy mornings are where I begin. Conversations I can never win, but it's not a competition. Though if it was, I'm losing. Welcome back, friends. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. As I said before, it is 2024 School Nest Lesson Planning Notebook Launch. Yes, it is that time again, my friends. And this year's vibe is giving all the art. If you are brand spanking new to School Nest, pay attention to a few details. If you are not new, you're just here to see the new stuff. Friends, I got you. So pay attention to the timestamps below. It's gonna detail any area that you just wanna go ahead and jump to in case you don't need to see this whole um, video. But I mean, come on, why not? Let's just do some a little bit of housekeeping. The first thing I'm gonna show you is the new stuff and I'm gonna relate to some of the differences from the 2023 If version. you wanna see a pen test, please make sure to stick around to the end of the video. We have three main planners this year um and i'll tell you that third one is a bonus one and i have all the images for you as well so this is the minimalist planner 52 weeks 12 months undated planner we're going to talk about the logistics of that if you're new here and so don't worry the daily pages and without the extra journaling pages um within it so it's going to be a little bit thinner and not as thick as our friend here um this is sage from this current year um, and these are undated, so I say current year, but obviously you can get any cover at any year. Um, so it would be that thickness, but with this cover, which is called Splatter Companion Notebook. So let's say you really love this cover, but you really need Biggie, then you can get a notebook in the other cover and have the best of both worlds. Or maybe you're that minimalist and a simple grid notebook does it for you. Well, that's going to be available in both of the main covers. Now this year, there is a bonus weekly undated planner. A bit of a preview of the bonus planner. It's going to be on a weekly undated planner, which is going to have the months in between um, the weeks. And that weekly spread is going to be a vertical layout that you can actually add time slots, whatever you like to do, however you plan. You're not going to have all the trackers or anything like that because this is like the ultra minimal to do whichever you like it's not yet available as the time that this video airs but it should be within a couple of days so i will let you know make sure you're following me over on instagram let's go into the minimalist the um, both of the designs the biggie and our slim lady here are both 52 weeks this year so last year that was a big difference we had 42 weeks because of the extra designs and extra tracking pages some of that has been tweaked and removed and i'll let you know what that is so actually this year you will have 52 on either option so if that was something that was a must for you she got you she got this you is if you're not familiar this binding is um soft it's a text um soft texture kind of like almost like a velvety type of vegan smooth um, cover um, that is printed by Amazon. This is approximately 55 pound paper. It can handle quite a bit. I've done numerous pen tests before, but stick around at the end and I will do another four and a half by 11 notebooks. These are not lay flat design. However, and you can tell with this one right here, I work them in, and this is towards the back, which is more difficult. I work them in like there is no tomorrow, and they lay pretty flat for me. So they are they do really well as you break them in, and the spine is really untouched, like as you can see here. And I've cracked that baby several times. And there you first get it. If you're trying to stay um, with the book binding and not cut it off, now there is a couple options that I've shown before. I've disbound this, I've spiral bind, um, bound this, and I've seen people put it in a binder as well. Um, I have been keeping them as is, but if when you first get it, if you plan to keep it as is, just work it in and it really will lead the way for you. So you're going to have some blank grid pages. And I'm going to tell you one of the biggest difference in this planner is that all the pages are grid instead of um, dot grid that some of the pages had. That is a huge plus for me. I love grid paper. I think there's just much more possibilities with it. You have one year calendar overview um, and you have two of them, but they're going to be, uh, I'll show you a difference in, in just a bit. One year daily tracker, category planning page 
pages, um, 16 sections of those book lists, 12th list. You have pro um, progress trackers. And I'll tell you, that's what used to be the curriculum progress one. I'm glad that it didn't go away completely because I use them, right? Um, and I know it was kind of like a half and half split, but now it's just more open-ended. You have 12 undated monthly calendars. In this planner, they are at the front of the planner as it was the year before. If you must have them in between the pages and you want even a more minimalist um, style without all the tracking pages and such, then you may want to look at the bonus planner. That planner has been able as of now to have the monthlies in between each week, um, the appropriate weeks. So, but the biggie and minimalist still have the um, monthly plan, um, the monthly pages up front, and then you go into your weekly lesson. Now you, and I think that just works. I know everybody's different. I think that that works really well, especially with an undated planner, because it's so easy to mess that up. Um, and especially if you're going in between and that just to totally throws me off. You have 52 weeks um, of weekly overview, goals and notes and schedule, and weekly lesson plan and grid, end of your reflection and brainstorm pages. As we go through it, I'm gonna um, put up um, pictures of Biggie so you can see um, the differences. And obviously there is gonna be quite a few pages that there's no difference whatsoever. All right, so here you have the yearly overview pages. It is now um, repeat it and there is no designation there. Um, and I will show you those things side by side from the previous one. As before, it would say field trip. Now it's just blank and you can determine whatever reason you want to use this for. All of the notebooks this year are white. There is no cream one, which you know what? I really like the cream. So this is one of my extra ones that Boxes, I have. They do appear more like, you know, they pop out of the page a little bit more for if you. If you got wind of this planner before it officially launched you will have the version that i am showing you now um if you get it within like a couple of days or so she had to tweak a couple things i'm going to show you what those are you'll have that it's so minimal you probably will never even notice unless i pointed it out but we're going to point them out because that's how i do all right so then you have a daily tracker now this um spread is quite different um than you had before and it's, instead of your attendance sheets you have a designated one that is labeled as daily tracker and another one that you can just do whatever you like with it. Now, how that looked like um, last year is that you had a grid page on this side and then an attendance sheet here. And, you know, so if you have multiple kiddos and stuff like that and you just feel like doing this a little bit different, this is the different format. You can see on the side right here, it also says uh, month right there and then the total days on here so if you want to use this because you need to track attendance or maybe you need to track something else then this is a great place to put that now here is an uh, another change on this um, design is still available for you but what it used to say um, again and you have curriculum overview so here is where I would list them by seasons my curricula if anything was tweaking or or anything like that or courses or out um, you know outsource courses and stuff like that so instead of having that and the ones that said classes which you have right here the classes you have this open banner um, situation here all right so it is open for interpretation on the top for you so you can log whatever you like now this is again this is fairly new um, I am getting this and getting this privilege to be able to see her process um, through creating this in the um, behind the scenes. So I was very, very familiar with the planner before it, it even arrived on my hand. So here she also gives you a little bit of a hint of how you can use these pages. So that's something that is also a little detailed um, that it was included here. So use these pages to document curriculum, activities, seasonal studies, field trips, or anything you would like to categorize. So giving you a little tips and idea, I think I really appreciate appreciate that she did that because I think that some of us or some people that are not natural planners just have a little bit of difficulty trying to imagine um, reimagine what they can use pages for so you have those repeats there and then you go straight into the book list now listen friends I'm gonna tell you a little something I did find for those books I fought for <laughs> there was a version and I'm gonna call her out for a second here there was a version that Megan had that the books were not on the bottom. They weren't. And I literally, like, I mean, everything was just like gorgeous and it looked pretty and everything. And I was like, wait a second, Megan, there's something missing. <laughs> and she was like, it's 
You noticed, didn't you? Of course I noticed. Um, but one thing that is different is that the, every year has been consistently this pattern. I want to say almost every year has been this pattern of books. Now it has a new really beautiful quirky design and you have like little planters and stuff like that in between. I really dig this. I love that she kept it and then reimagine it. So the books have stayed, my friends. They're staying. All right. I'm very excited about that because like I said, I fought for it. I didn't fought, have to fight hard at all. She was like, okay, I'll put them back in. All right. So you have a few pages of those with the book list. Um, and then um, pay attention if you have not signed up for her um, newsletter and stuff. She And she also has it detailed on her website and on the listings with exact things for everything. Now you have the progress tracker. So what does this page and what it was before you said curriculum trackers. And um, a lot of folks didn't use it that way. I mean, just different types of um, homeschooling and stuff. Um, I did, um, but I'm glad these pages did not go away. Um, so you have an open banner here and you can use this however you like and you can track up to 180 lessons, 180 days, whatever you need to track. And this is how it looks from before. So um, the banners is a little bit longer. You have like, you know, the shadow and all the stuff going on. And then here, like I said, it said curriculum progress. So now it's more open-ended for you. So you can decide what you would like to track on those pages. Now I'm gonna tell you, like if you're someone that doesn't need to track this at all, this is a perfect place where you can go ahead and um, paste something into these pages and use it for something that is more personal to you. All right, um, I actually appreciate pages that um, I don't need to use because it gives me permission to paste something over it. Over here, again, she has little tips. Again, this is an, a new little touch. Use these pages to visualize, track your progress, through individual lessons, units, weeks, or days of the lesson completed. Alternatively, you can use them to habit trackers for the days outside, parks, visited books, read, etc. So giving you tons and tons of ideas of how you can use the progress tracker. Now here, the biggest difference with your monthly layout, like I said, they're all gonna so be over front. two pages. And instead of dot grid on the side, as it was before, now you have grid. It also says month whether up. you got um, the Mystic series or you got the Nature series. There was quite a bit of design throughout, which I really but appreciate. The design choice this year is much more minimalistic, so there is not this added design element um, throughout. But again, this is a very you know bujo type of planner, so you can really add whatever is your flavor. One other thing that I would like to point your eyes to: this one looked more like a circle that it was like sketched on. Now you have a gray circle on here for the month. Month, and you can put a sticker over it or just write straight on it okay so that is uh, a difference there and then here you're gonna see month of and um, before it said month in review so month of you just a little bit uh, a touch of making it more open Have and all the, both of these pages instead of being um, the dot grid from before, you have the grid. And now these grid are slightly smaller than her other grids that she had before. So if you would like, you know, somebody that's really into um, journaling and stuff and know these um, specifics, it, um, I'll share that with you now. So it is now 0.25 instead of 0.3. So there is a slight difference in the grid size. And for us that are, you know, big journaling people, then um, that, you know, those distinctions we care about. So I'll share that with you. <laughs> All right, so this is again, very open-ended, so you can do whatever you like. And that continues on. You will notice a little bit of font change from um, previous year. And she also does, like she always has a tweak always into the, the font, font from year to year. I do appreciate the cursive font coming back and making a grand re-entrance. <laughs> I love that font. And if you remember anything, remember it was from the yellow bouquet that um, it had a lot of the cursive writing in this one. So I really um, miss and appreciate that, that that little touch is there, that little, little touch. All right, so you have those monthly pages from between and let's just go and skip on by because it's gonna repeat 12 times. All right, so now we're gonna have some changes. All right, so let me um, give you a heads up. My page um, is gonna look a tad little bit different than what you, hold on. We gotta massage her. This one changed a little bit. She was intending to change a little bit the way you see it here. Your copy is not gonna look like mine if you like order. Now that was as clear as a pickle.
the design that you're seeing right here is basically you are not going to notice as a difference if you got whiff of the planner being available before it was actually available and purchased it it's going to look exactly like mine if you purchase it within one or two days from now it's most likely going to have her last minute change which is more of a little design change nothing is wrong with them there is no error it's just in the checkbox is going to have more of a solid line versus what you see on my planner here that's it that's all the difference the banner now this is a change that i was a very welcome change for me i you know as she was crafting this and you know um sharing bits and pieces with me um i really love this change because before it said weekly goes and um weekly goals whoa and notes and now it's an open by um banner i never use this as this like ever ever like I literally just ignore that title and wrote other things. So I love the fact that it's more open-ended now and it doesn't like, you know, put me in a box. Even though you can recreate the box, friends, you can definitely recreate the box. I love that it's recreated um, on here. And then you have just the big open weekly overview, which is the same as last year with a little bit, you know, the font, um, the script is a little bit different and um, obviously the weekly spread looks a tad different. Now, if you Here's saw the student planner, and there will be some new um, student planner on the student planner, you had the little circles on top that you can circle the month and you can circle the day. I love that about the student planner. I was like, for the longest time, as soon as I saw that, and I've seen it in a couple of other planners before, I was like, I wish that was in the lesson planner. So I don't know if I just sent her like subliminal messages or something. But she did it, and I'm not going to take responsibility for it because I didn't tell her or anything. But I love that she did that. I literally was just thinking nonstop, I wish that was in the planner. So that big black banner that you're used to seeing across the weekly um, plan pages is not, um, it doesn't go as far in anymore. So you just have it anchoring the page spread um, on each side. And then you have the circle months, I mean, circle days here. So it, um, all the way to the 31st. So you would just like, you know, March and whatever day. I don't even know what day is it. What day is it? Oh, I think it's just, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so you would circle the day on here and, or maybe highlight it or whatever and, uh, and keep it going like that way. I love that. Freaking love that, but it does not end there, friends. It doesn't. You see here on the bottom, I used to love that the first planner used to say what week you were in. Now, of course, that kind of put you in a little bit of a box if you started in a funky time um, using the planner. However, I love that it came back in a flex way, right? So here, you can also, in the bottom, circle what week of your school year you're in if that's something you keep track of. If it's not, put a washi over it. It'll be fine, all right? Um, so that is one of the biggest chains with this planner, I would say, is the weekly spread. Now, not only that, friends, let's see another change that you may not notice with the naked eye, okay? As you can see in this spread, you have one, two, three, four lines divided by lines. So on here, you have one, two, three, four, five. Now notice that the difference in the width of each line is really like hardly noticeable. So it's not like it became totally tiny to fit that fifth line. It really is barely noticeable, um, if at all. Um, of the size change. So now what that matters is with your families that have bigger families that will matter having that extra line um, or you have more to say or more to write. That extra line is really a nice game changer. The old, um, the 2023 had a banner on the side to put like your subjects or however you were doing, if you were doing the days on the side or whatever not. Um, and you have that here too and you have the top banners here as well. However, pay attention my friends. Look, Okay, right here, you're just going into the seam. I never had any troubles like writing into between that because like I said, by the time, and this is a new one because um, I had, I got, I bought like all of them last year so I can show you all the things. Um, but here in the margin, it stays um, empty and you have right here. So it, if you're looking at this side of the page, you can see what subject or what day you're looking at. So I appreciate that very much. And it's right here and the margin so you can keep that subject going or maybe if you're restructuring it and writing certain things here and then on that side something different whatever is your boat you prefer that banner there i think it's an awesome change as well um so i appreciate that and i say like last year board i listen uh megan is my buddy 
She's my sister from another mother and another father. Um, and I always beat her to um, sending me a planner pretty much all the time. Like I, I, I buy the minute I know that she's like all set and um, before she can notice. This year, I did not beat her to it. But the reason I did not say any um, added disclosures is because it was a gift as a friend because we have, we, we, we like this, we like this, and we share our nerdiness together. And it was just basically a thank you with no expectations of reviewing it or anything like that. But you guys know me, I am never missing a school nest. have launch. the weekly plan. And then this is where you're gonna see the difference. So you are going to have in those pages with the big boy, which is your splatter cover, is the following pages. You're gonna have the daily outline pages. You're gonna have that extra journaling page uh, um, in between. And these are the pages that make the difference in the size and how much additional you can write. So that the big boy is really good for those of you that have a big family, have a lot to say, or like to journal or, you know, back plan however they like so forward you would use your weekly spread and then the daily you can document what you do in your time or you can have it as sort of like a scatter book so those are the pages that are differ um that differ and you still are going to have that more of an open um space and instead of having that divided line um that was for the days before for the dailies you no longer have those daily lines um so it's just one big open grid space that you can um write it however you like if you want to just continue in a narrative form and just like write the days and continue on you still have those two pages on there and then an additional page on the back and then you have yes, that weekly um, spread there is your major difference with the two planners, okay? That right there, that's your difference. Here, that will continue on throughout. Um, and again, what changes with the other one is that before you hit the next week, you have those daily journaling pages. Um, so once you are done with all that, my friend, when you get to the end of the book as it once was before, um, and just a little bit of a different look, there's always a party in my head. I mean, you're invited. Um, reflections, what worked and what didn't, and then it's just big grid space. I love the grid. Grid is life. Plans for the next year. Love the cursive. I, I just, I love that distinction. Um, then end of year wrap up, what worked, what didn't, and end of year wrap up again, what worked, what didn't. So if you're going to do that one per kid, or if you just want to um, kind of dot down some space notes. to do a lot with like that. I before. So just like before where you saw the weekly plan and then you had the daily pages, mine is this line on here that you're not gonna see that. And then you have the third page. So you still have the same amount, plus it does have the 52 weeks in the big boy, all right? So it's still gonna have that for you um, as you saw. Now let's talk about some other nitty gritties. Okay, so here's option one. You can keep it in as binding, right? If you are not about that life and you need to have a um, coiled bound, um, your office, I've had really good luck with Office Depot and Staples. Give them a call first before heading out there and make sure that they will do it for you. It should cost you like five bucks. You have the spine cut, right? You have the spine cut. I do highly recommend. Um, now this was fine. Like, uh, and this is like, I don't know how many years old. Now this was fine. However, I do recommend to laminate your front cover if you're going to spiral bind it, right? You know, perform surgery on it, give it a little protection, give it a little bandaid and laminate the covers because when you stand it up in your shelf or whatever you keep it, it'll just hold off better. Cause see, when you put this on, uh, in your, um, in your shelves, it just stands perfectly, nothing. You know, you see the spine, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it calls you, but with these, it just starts to like, you know, I'm weak, I wanna lay down. Um, so you wanna protect it, so go ahead and laminate the cover, which I did not do the first year. Another option, and I have shown this before, I did a whole entire tutorial over on Instagram um, before I had a YouTube page because I was refusing to come over here. I didn't want to come over here. Um, this was just laminated at home, so it's too, totally weak. I did this, I sacrificed the planner just so I can show you guys uh, a process of going ahead and get um, disbounding it yourself. So the only thing you would need instead of asking them to sp um, spiral bound it or punch it or anything like that is to have your spine cut off. And most places will do that for you, office supply stores, and usually like three bucks, and then the, the coil is what the additional couple bucks or whatever, and then another couple bucks if you ask them to laminate it. Um, if you have to, like obviously I can stay even in a big boy and completely with the spine in. No issues. 
Um, and I, I paste a lot of stuff in there because it's my scatter book. Um, and not just like, you know, writing like my lesson planner. Um, now with this, I have a full tutorial of getting it disc bound. So basically you have it cut and um, then you need like, you know, a happy pan a planner or tool um, punch and then um, get yourself some cheap discs that you can find them on, on clearance, especially after a launch. Um, you can go to Michael's or whatever and find um, a clearance for the disc or whatever one brand you like. And then you can play around with it and put in all kinds of stuff. I want, you know, in between the pages that is personal to you. So that is one of the benefits of that. Now there, I know I've seen other people that just also put it in a three ring binder, um, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, so those are those some of the options. Now let's get to um, and finish off with the pen test. I always um, make Megan nervous. <laughs> Every year I do something a little bit different and I try different things. I even try things that I know is gonna really fail um, just to show you guys what you can or cannot do in this paper. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do this. Let's play with that. Um, so I'm going to collect, and this is the fun part. Ooh, let's do this one. Ooh, and this one. Ooh, I think I want to do, <laughs> I am getting my evil smile. Okay, let's do that. And I got stuff, y'all. pretty quickly um and most of this I, I have a ton of like accessories for Marin Condren so um I have a fine um, point uh marker here and a chisel end I have a stamped um which is also very very um heavy and highly pigmented um and then I have a ballpoint um pen from Oak Meadow so just a generic pen um I actually love this pen um writes really really well um that most of us will easily grab if you're not like you know uh, planner snob um, like myself and I have an extra fine um, precise rolling um, ball pen I never use this but for some reason I have several of them I don't know um, I also have a focus um, brush um, pen on here then I have a fine point um, marker from EC again this is they are highly pigmented but I'm going this is going to be a different weight than the other one and this is the traditional one that you usually um, see from EC I have a medium point and a fine pen on um, there this is the brush one that has a medium and fine point end and um, actually this is going to be the same as Oak Meadow so I'm going to put that aside we're not going to do that so let's do these real quick and let's see how it does. I promise I wasn't going to do sh the Sharpie this year, so I'm going to be nice and not do the Sharpie. All right, there we go. I'm trying to get you on my mind less, but then again, I couldn't mind less. Got me like, what's in your coffee? I hope you call me and we can talk about our hobbies. Yeah, like finding movies to get lost in. And quoting phrases from the office What's it like to wear that halo? So sweet it's painful So would you put me on your payroll, girl? I know it's probably not too healthy You got me over here obsessing, whoa Friends call me stupid, call me crazy, well So long to sanity All right, so let's talk about it real quick. We had our, the biggest ones, I would not use a highly pigmented uh, marker. Um, so I would stay away from those because you're going to have like, that one was my stamp, right? But even that didn't bleed through to the other side and I had pretty much a big amount of weight on it. Um, and I almost wrote, sorry, Megan. <laughs> I did it again but anyway so this one is the stamp and i had pretty a good amount of weight on it it did definitely bleed through didn't transfer over to the other pages but it did bleed through nothing feathered um so that's pretty um rad but let's um 
it had a few seconds to dry already and nothing has feather um, on there so that's pretty cool um, now even the EC markers I've shown that before it really does shadow a little bit but not as much as you would think on this paper so the shadow is not that bad whatsoever um, now we also had the brush pens I would also stay away from brush pens unless you have like a lighter stroke for, um, with it um, with your um, writing I do um, so mine doesn't transfer over um, but you can see a little bit more shadowing and then a little bit more higher um, bleed through or not not really bleed through but more shadowing um, on those points that I pressed on a little bit harder so um, anything like your uh, you know your brush pens that would be similar to the EC brush pens then you would put that in the same category as that um, your ballpoint pens obviously those did fantastically well um, and um, your fountain pens will also um, depend if you are a fountain pen user how much pressure you put on there so nothing really splat through to the other side um, but it did have some bleed through with the stamp so uh, I would use cautious with marker stamps but you can use other type of stamps you know that those have a lighter amount of ink on them I've done those in the past so watch with your markers um, that you obviously your fine point markers are gonna do extremely well um, I see hardly any shadowing with the um, with the fine point markers and um, that was right here and there's nothing it's almost like writing with a pen so that did um, fantastically well a little bit more caution with the uh, um, medium point markers and then um, your various pens usually do extremely well with it your highlighters are going to shadow through a little bit and you can see a tiny bit of more um, pigmentation on those um, um, lateral ends because I pressed a little bit harder but nothing you know I use my liners every day and um, perfectly fine so you should be uh, you can be fine with your um, your highlighters and such and just watch it with sh um, sharpie type of quality or highly pigmented mark <laughs> That is another launch for this year. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Tell me what you're thinking. Are you feeling my minimalist friend? Or are you going to have a little splatter in your next school year life and go with Biggie? Or do you want to stick around and hold off for that new enticing layout? Let me know in the comments down below if there's any questions I did not answer for you. Tell me that too. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me and it's always a pleasure. Happy planning. Bye-bye. <laughs>